I'm Dr. James Forrester, and I am the former chief of cardiology at Cedar sinai Medical Center. I've written a book called The Heart Healers, which is about the greatest medical breakthrough of our time. It's an amazing story filled with astonishing successes and heartbreaking failures. When I first thought about going into medicine, we had no treatment at all for heart disease, no surgery, no devices, no drugs, and yet in the years that I have been in medicine, we have come up with so many spectacular advances that now, in the next decade, heart disease will no longer be our number one killer. Our story begins on a World War II battlefield where a young surgeon faces a soldier with shrapnel protruding from his heart. Imagine yourself in that situation. Centuries of surgical teaching have said, do not touch the heart, but he puts a clamp on that shrapnel and yanks it out. And he is met by a torrent of blood, sticks his finger into the hole and begins furiously suturing around his finger. When he goes to remove his finger as the bleeding slowly stops, he discovers that he sutured his surgical glove to the patient's heart, he cuts it away. And that is actually the beginning of cardiac surgery because the patient did survive. And from that, we then developed bypass surgery, valve surgery, and the heart-lung machine. It's an astonishing story uh, that had a very humble beginning. It's the wackiest story in all of cardiology and really in all of medicine. A young internal medicine resident gets the idea that the best way to treat heart trouble is by infusing drugs directly into the heart instead of into the vein. So he goes to his superiors and he says, I want to put a catheter into the heart. And they say, there's no way you could do that. You'd kill the patient. And so he romances the nurse with the keys to the supply cabinet, gets a urinary bladder catheter, and he sticks it into his arm, passes it all the way up into his heart, and nothing happens. He has catheterized his own heart, and he survived. And that was the beginning of cardiac catheterization uh, because now we could infuse x-ray dye and visualize all the chambers of the heart and the coronary arteries. Just an incredible story. By far the most important outcome was we saw for the first time the cholesterol plaques, tiny plaques in coronary arteries that are the cause of heart attack. And so from that we developed bypass surgery and then we developed angioplasty, clot dissolving drugs, and finally drugs that actually reduced the formation of cholesterol plaques. And it is that combination of advances that will ultimately lead to heart disease no longer being our number one killer. Well, there are a number of really fascinating advances. Let me show you two. This is my iPhone, and on the back of it is an attachment, which are two electrodes for recording electrocardiogram. So if I put my fingers on there, I can record my electrocardiogram and then send it to a, a doctor to review. This is the electrocardiogram of a patient who uh, sent me this just a few minutes before we began this interview. And uh, it turns out it's a normal electrocardiogram, thank goodness. But if you were on the golf course and you had a fluttering in your heart, you could uh, send me your ECG and I could tell you whether to tee off or go to an emergency room. The second amazing advance that I want to show you is, can you put a valve the size of, a, say, a diameter of a quarter into the heart without opening up the chest? And the answer is, yes, you can today, because you can crimp that valve on a catheter with a balloon inside the valve, and then pass it up into just the right position, inflate the balloon, and you have got the perfect placement of a heart valve. It is exactly the same as the ship in the bottle story, but this time in the human heart.